Good morning. In my previous video, you must have seen the external features of ponds. Now, we'll study about the internal features. The internal features of ponds can be studied by taking sections of ponds. You can see this is the ponds and this one is medulla. If you see the ponds, uh, we can take sections at two different levels that is upper part of ponds and at the lower part of the ponds. So, the internal features can be studied by looking into the structures of the ponds after we take section. First, we will study the common features which is present in both the upper part and the lower part of the ponds. As you know by now, the ponds has the two parts, the ventral aspect and the dorsal aspect. Okay. This, this much is the ponds. The ventral aspect contains many scattered masses of grey matter which are called the pontine nucleus. This ventral aspect also contains multiple transversely and vertically running fibers. If you see the transversely running fibers, the transversely running fibers will end up in the middle cerebellar peduncles. These fibers can cross from one side to the other. Most of the fibers will be crossing from one side to the other. And few fibers will go in ipsilateral direction. And hence, these kind of transversely running horizontal fibers will project into the opposite side cerebellum or maybe to the same side of the cerebellum. The vertical fibers are cortico, this is the cerebral cortex. The cortico spinal fibers and the cortico pontine fibers. These cortico pontine fibers will be ending in the pontine nucleus. These are the vertically arranged fibers. The cortico spinal fibers will form the descending pathway and then it enters inside the medulla and it will be forming the medullary decusation. The cortico pontine fibers will come from different regions of the cortex. It will come from the frontal, parietal, temporal and the occipital regions of the cortex and it will be ending in the pontine nucleus. The horizontal fibers will be ending in the middle cerebellar peduncles. As it was already discussed, it will be ending in the middle cerebellar peduncle, which will be connecting the pons to the cerebellum. Now we will draw the section of pons and discuss the common features of the pons. As you see, this is the anterior aspect. And I already said the posterior aspect which will be forming the which will be forming the floor of the fourth ventricle, which will be forming the floor of the fourth ventricle. So this is actually the floor of the fourth ventricle. This is the anterior bulged portion, and this is the basilar groove for the basilar artery. This pons section can be divided into the ventral aspect and the dorsal aspect. So whatever the pontine nucleus and the horizontal fibers and the vertical fibers what we discussed so far everything is present in the ventral aspect. So these are the scattered pontine nucleus. And these are the horizontal fibers which will be ending either in the same side, which will be ending either in the same side cerebellum or in the opposite side cerebellum. So most of the fibers will be crossing to the opposite side. And 
the peduncle which is carrying all these fibers are called the middle cerebellar peduncle the dorsal aspect of the pons contains scattered nerve fibers and scattered nerve cell bodies which is the scattered gray matter and the scattered nerve fibers and this scattered particles scattered nerve fibers and the uh, gray matter together it can be described as reticular formation so reticular formation can be defined as where they we don't see any well defined nuclei or fibers which are packed in bundles so the fibers are scattered and the nuclei that is the neurons are also scattered this reticular formation is present throughout the brain stem if you take the general makeup of the dorsal part of the pons the posterior aspect of the dorsal part mainly contains the ascending tracts mainly contains the ascending tract and the dorsal aspect will be containing few descending tracts the posterior most part will be forming the floor of the fourth ventricle and it will be lined by the gray matter and this also contains the nucleus of nucleus of some of the cranial nerves this dorsal part is bounded laterally by the superior cerebellar peduncle on the upper part of the pons and the inferior cerebellar peduncle on the lower part of the pons as we said this region is completely occupied by the ascending tracts the middle portion on either side of the midline is occupied by a oval lemniscus called the medial lemniscus lateral to this area we have the trigeminal lemniscus on either side so this is the medial lemniscus this is trigeminal lemniscus lateral to the trigeminal lemniscus we have another ascending pathway which is the lateral lemniscus so these are the three lemniscus which are arranged in order from medial to lateral that is a medial lemniscus then the trigeminal lemniscus then the lateral lemniscus so along with the medial lemniscus the anterior spinothalamic tract also runs along with the medial lemniscus so this is the anterior spinothalamic tract the spinothalamic and the spinotectoral tract run along the trigeminal lemniscus so spino thalamic and spinotectoral tract spinothalamic and the spinotectoral tract run along the trigeminal now we should uh, we should remember along with the medial lemniscus we have the anterior spinothalamic tract and along with the trigeminal lemniscus we have the spinothalamic and the spinotectoral tract which will be run now along with the lateral lemniscus along with the lateral lemniscus we have superior olivary nucleus we have a nucleus called superior olivary nucleus much more laterally we have ventral spino ventral spino cerebellar tract ventral spino cerebellar tract this is present dorsomedial 
sorry this is present ventro medial to that of the which peduncle is this the inferior cerebellar peduncle this is present ventro medial to the inferior cerebellar peduncle this ventro medial position is seen only in the inferior part sorry the lower part of the pons and when you see the upper part of the pons this ventral ventral spinal cerebellar tract is present inside the lower part of the peduncle ventral to the lemniscus we have copious amount of transversely running running fibers only ventral to the lemniscus yeah copious amount of transversely running fibers which are called the trapezoid body which are called the trapezoid body which are called the trapezoid body so these are the common feature about the tracts which are present on the anterior aspect now we will see the tracts which are present on the posterior aspect so all the tracts which are present in the anterior aspect of the dorsal part of the pons are all the ascending tracts now we will see some of the descending tracts which are present in the dorsal aspect which is common for both the upper and the lower part of the pons so medially we have tectospinal tract on the dorsal aspect tectospinal tract on the dorsal aspect little more ventral to the tectospinal tract and laterally we have the rubrospinal tract so same way it is present on either side the tectospinal and the rubrospinal tract so near the midline more dorsally we have medial longitudinal fasciculus have medial longitudinal fasciculus can be shortly termed as mlf so whatever tracks and the fibers we have drawn so far is common for both the upper and the lower part of the pons now we should study the difference in the what are the difference which are present in the section of the upper part of the pons and the lower part of the pons we'll discuss their differences in the next video